We are back for episode three of our first Gen Tacoma build series. If you've been following along this far, you've watched us tear the truck down, you've watched us build the rear suspension. And if you've been following along, this is probably the episode you've been looking forward to the most. We've done as much as we can to get ahead before we start this video because there's a lot to do here. We've already got our axle prepped and the brackets that we know where they're gonna end up tacked on the axle. We have our cross member prefabricated and mocked up in place. Got a couple welds on there so that it holds. We got our frame plates in. I had to make a couple modifications to the passenger side just to make it a little bit easier to weld. The first thing we're gonna do today is get the front axle in place. We're gonna mock up a tire on there and figure out where not only it needs to go, but where the vehicle allows it to go. You've obviously got limitations with your oil pan, things of that sort. We also managed to convert this thing to a rear sump pan. I was able to drill it out for a T100 dipstick on the side so that we can get a proper reading with the dipstick. It's got oil in it. So we are ready to get the axle in it. We've got the axle roughed in where I think it's gonna kinda have to go. Our limitations here are the differential hitting the frame for up travel, and we have the axle as far back towards the rear of the vehicle as we can before we run into interference issues with the oil pan. So the next order of business is gonna be to put a 40 inch tire into the wheel well, mount it up to the axle. That way we can get an idea of how A, it's going to look, and B, the clearance. From what I see, I'd like to go back just a little bit. I think I'm just gonna pop it back a half an inch. I think it'll center the tire up in that wheel well opening a little bit more, and it looks like we have a little bit of room on the back to work with. I'm gonna scoot this back. This tire measures to 39 and a half inches, which is pretty damn close to 40 inches, so I'm confident that what decisions we make with this will work for everybody in the future. But I think we're ready to build some lower links. Now that we got the lower links done, it was time to take care of the upper link. First thing I did was build a frame overlay plate and tacked it into place for the upper link bracket to mount to. These stock frames aren't really thick enough to hold the link bracket in place without eventually ripping off the frame. While we had the lower links out, I also trimmed and clearance the cross member for the links to swing side to side. I was a bit worried that as the suspension cycled, the jam nuts could run into the cross member. So I figured now was the best time for us to go ahead and clearance that out of the way. With all of that stuff done, it was time to lower the truck down into place, set the axle to the six degrees of caster we're looking for, and start to reassemble this thing. With everything lined up, we were able to assemble the upper link with its brackets, put everything where it needed to be, and start tacking it in place. The clearance around the frame side was pretty Pretty good. Things got pretty tight on the axle side between the frame and the oil pan, but we were able to get it to somewhere we felt was safe and cleared everything pretty well, so we went ahead and tacked that in also. Now that the upper link is in place, we went ahead and cut some of the core support out so we can mock up the steering box where it's gonna sit and mark where the pitman arm swings so we know where we are able to mount our pan hard bracket on the truck. A couple tacks on the pan hard bracket where we think it's gonna need to be. We made sure it was square to the frame and we're on our way. So we've got the brackets all in this thing. It's gonna be a tight squeeze. I'm trying to get as much up travel as I can out of this. I took our master pan hard bar from our second gen kits and tried to fit it in there. I think the front axle bumps out about an inch lower on the second gen kits and this is not working. I don't really want to take an inch of travel out of this thing. I'd rather just reconfigure some stuff under here and fiddle with this a little bit more. I'm not too sure. So let's just get to it. So this pan hard bar is not going to work. The reason why is T100 
to get it to go up and over the diff, I was having to bend it about 45 degrees. And once you get to that point, you, in my opinion, if you take a hard hit, if you flop the truck on its side, something bad happens, the chance of bending your pan hard bar starts to creep up on you. And I don't like that. And where it was, I was looking at like an eighth inch of clearance on everything. And once you get into building these things, you learn that over time things move, you bend things like it's inevitable. You bend your lower links, the placement of your axle changes a little bit. And so I'm not a fan of how this was looking. And I think I'm gonna do a little bit of trimming on the pan hard bracket mount. And the same way I do the second gen kits, I'm gonna kick the pan hard bar forward just a little and then back. And what that's gonna do for us is allow us to get around the ballpark of only doing like 18 degrees of bend, which is what the other bar has. Be a lot stronger, fit a little bit better, and uh, overall, I think it'll look a lot better too because a pan hard bar with this much bend in it, you're just asking for trouble. Kind of sucks. I feel like we're, you know, moving forward on that. And now we are back to square one, but we're trying things, we're learning, and we're making sure we get this thing exactly how we want it. Take two on the pan hard. So I bent this one up pretty much the same as the other kit. There's a couple little bit differences in bend, but um, it's looking like right about there is gonna be the sweet ticket. Um, seems to fit good. Clears the oil pan, everything seems happy. So I'm gonna notch this, put it in place, tack it, and see what it does. Now we got our pan hard bar all figured out. I took it over and I beveled the edge so I can put a nice big weld in there. We're gonna lay this thing out, tack it, and then we just gotta fit up the other side. We're gonna run a double adjuster on that end. And uh, yeah, scratch pan hard bar off the list. It's fixed in place as far as side to side, front to back, because we have the pan hard and the three links in it. I can finally raise the axle up because I'm tired of laying on the damn ground. We use my bench to level the axle out. We got jack stands on the front and back of the truck to make it level this way. It's level this way. And now the axle is perfectly positioned under there where we need it for us to start figuring out where the shocks go. We got about a quarter inch of clearance everywhere. Pan hard bar looks good. And then the oil pan clearance. I don't know if you can really see it, but we got just enough there. This all seems to clear. This little notch I put here seemed to work good, so. Looking good. So what I went ahead and did was I went to the driver's side because there's no real limiting factors on the inside of the engine bay on the passenger side, but on the driver's side, we have the master cylinder and the brake booster. The brake booster obviously hangs off the firewall and we can't get the shock too far back because it'll run into there. Uh, I'll have to get a little creative with how the shock tower goes together, but it's not a big deal. It's all being custom made anyway, so one way or another, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the least amount I think I can get away with, fit the shock up there, see if I can get all the plate work in there, and uh, hopefully that fits. Let's cut it, put the shock in there, and see what's going on. See looking in through the top, it's not crazy intrusive. I do think that if you have to swap out your brake booster, you're probably gonna end up having to pick the cab up a little bit, but uh, it is what it is. I think we are at a good stopping point for the day, and our goal tomorrow will be build some shock towers. Once we got our little hole cut in the inner fender of this thing, we're able to start getting the shock in place and make templates of what's going to go where. So the first thing I did was put this little cardboard template together. 
See it notches the frame here, goes up, has a little hole in it for the shock bolt to go through. Once we did that, I got it drawn up, cut myself a template out of 16 gauge, figured out this, and then from there, with a little bit of foresight, I was able to cut the piece out and make our top cap and use some shock tabs that we had from our other kits to build what I think is gonna be a good base for where the shock's gonna mount. So from here, what we'll do is tack this in place, mount the shock, make sure everything looks good, and then we'll build our other two pieces of the shock tower in place, get it all tacked up, and hopefully it fits good, everything works, and we can get the other side done. Like I said earlier, this is the harder side because we have to fit it around the fuel lines that go right in front of the master cylinder and the brake booster is super close to where we're at too. So doing our best to make it work on this side because we know it'll be a breeze on the other side once we're there. All right, all that seems to fit. You can see I drew out where the bump stop's gonna be, so we've got room for that still. Looks like we got plenty of room up here for the coil spring to clear. Obviously, as the axle droops out, the coil is gonna move that way, so this is the tightest clearance we'll see. And then up this side, we're just gonna make it come down and kick over to give us a little bit more room, add a little bit of triangulation to the tower, give it some more strength. And from there, we can make our rear cap and see how we're looking. So what I went ahead and did was cut everything and tack together the shock tower for the passenger side based off of my dimensions, just rough, it's just tacked together. So took some measurements. I'm gonna cut out this side of the inner fender, pop that in there. There's nothing behind here. I don't have a brake master cylinder, fuel lines, things like that in my way. So it'll make it a lot easier for me to template the back piece. I'll make it for this side, tack it on there, and then I will make it mirrored for the driver's side, tack that in place, and I think we should have a roller. So. The goal for today is to start cycling it and really see how we're looking. Well, there you have it, that one's in. Everything seemed to be good. We're getting 83.3 right there. You can see this thing is not fixed. 83.3 there. I also referenced the distance from this cutout of this plate. I know it's hard to see here. To the back side, that's about 3 sixteenths of an inch there. If you look there, that's about 3 sixteenths of an inch. I think we're looking pretty good. It may not be perfect, but for R&D purposes, a, I think it's good. Yeah, you can see that side. So I got a template made. I went ahead and took notes of all the angles, the lengths of everything. Took some references, so I'm gonna draw this. We're gonna cut it out of 3 16 after we cut it out of 16 gauge to test it because we like wasting thin metal far more than we like wasting thick metal. Just gotta take that little bit off. Took a little bit off the bottom, made some notes. We're gonna modify the program and cut a new one out because I want it to come off of the table perfect because I'm obviously trying to duplicate it from side to side and there's no need for me to cut one, grind on it. Cut one, grind on it. I'd rather dial it in on the computer, cut it out, and it's good to go. I think we can pick it up off the lift. Let's see if my tax hold.
Well, everything looks good. Lots of room for the shock to clear over there. All the room we need for the pan hard bar. On this side, everything looks good too. That's all clearing. Track bar is nice and happy. See, we got all the room we need there. It is looking pretty good. Well, there you have it. We got a three link front Tacoma. There's a couple little things I will be changing from this truck to the final design. I'm gonna make the upper link a touch shorter. I get a little bit more caster change than I'd like. I don't think it's gonna be that much of an issue, but to get a little bit better feeling in the steering wheel when you're going fast through stuff, I wanna shorten that upper link just a touch. I'm talking half inch. Um, no more than an inch. So I might change it on this. Obviously everything's still tacked together. I can uh, bottom that link out to get that half inch. I'm looking for and just retack the frame side bracket or the axle side bracket, one or the other. You saw everything cleared pretty well. Seems to be looking good. And I think that's where we'll end this video. Next video, we'll make sure to do limit straps, bump stops, uh, brake lines, get the drive lines done, and actually fully weld this thing out, cycle it, because I'm dying to get it outside. But for now, I gotta get to work. I gotta edit this video for you guys, so I will see you on episode four. Episode four. Have a good day.